So it's happy Halloween. We're glad to have you watching tonight. And we have a spooky show tonight. It's a scary show. You should be afraid. Uh, you need to watch this show. Your liberties are at stake. And you're going to hear stories of people's liberties being abused uh, by our courts and by our bailiffs and by our, our servants that are supposed to be protecting our liberties that are, in a sense, abusing them very se severely. And uh, it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so I'm going to talk about that. And actually, uh, the city of Maplewood went and had uh, in their Maplewood Monthly an article about domestic violence, and I thought it was okay. Um, but in there, there was still not the mention that men get abused and what's going on and how to deal with the situation of domestic violence to men. And then the Maplewood City Council earlier in the month had a presentation by the Tubna, Tubman Institute or organization on domestic violence and, and what goes on, but yet there still was an underplaying of domestic violence to men. So I decided to go down uh, this Monday to the Maplewood City Council and watch uh, and talk about domestic violence and kind of lay the story straight. So let's uh, watch this video here uh, and we'll comment on it after we see it. So here we go. You're going to have to turn the volume up a little on that. It's coming. <laughs> it's there someplace. You're going to have to turn the volume up. With about 40% of all abuse allegations. Yeah, go ahead and start it over. It's small, but and that's what we can do. In order to deal start with it over from the beginning. There we as go. You all know that uh, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And um, I would like to address some issues relating to disabusing domestic violence. What that means is uh, the domestic violence industry in itself needs to uh, stop being abusive. And uh, one of the things that's happened, and I've testified in the legislature a number of times, is that uh, men aren't being accounted for in part of this equation as being abused. Uh, in Minnesota, the number one abuser of children uh, are women um, under age 12. Over age 12, it's men. But you combine the two ages together, uh, and it comes out pretty much equally. Uh, women are the number one killers of children in Minnesota. And that's, that's not, that has nothing to do with abortion or anything. It's just, uh, it's mothers. Uh, second is mother's boyfriends. Third is relatives. Uh, and fourth is fathers. Um, Dr. Martin Fiebert of University of California, San Diego, has put together well over 200 studies on domestic violence where over half of them were done by doctrinal educated women, empirical studies. And every one of those studies except one said that men get abused just as violently and just as much as women do. Um, and so, but that brings an, another part of the equation in here is there is a issue of false allegations. These studies also came up and were very consistent with about 40% of all abuse allegations are false. And in order to deal with domestic violence truthfully and effectively, the abuse against women, the abuse against children, and we have to add in that equation, the abuse against men needs to be dealt with. Men have to be out of that equation. Others, domestic violence stuff, well, we're, we're, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, 
and in these studies, women were uh, the number one instigators. In other words, they started it. Um, another aspect of false allegations is the importance, and we have it in law, that police officers are supposed to find exculpatory evidence that something did or did not take place based on the accusation. It doesn't happen a lot. They don't look for it. And I just think it's important that in order to really deal with the domestic violence situation that we deal with it in an open and honest way. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Now some points of clarification on that. When I say that 40% of uh, domestic violence allegations are false, you got to do the math. That means 60% of them are true. But what you'll find out is that when these allegations are false, they're destructive to the person that's being accused and perjury charges are you know less than a tenth of a percent that people actually get charged for perjury when they know it's perjury when the courts are when the prosecutor knows that it's perjury so uh it just we just need to deal with it truthfully get everything every aspect in there otherwise uh we can't, it's not going to be dealt with. We're just spending all this money, all this time and resource, and we're just really just trying to accomplish a political agenda uh, that goes nowhere except to destroy. And um, so uh, I want to bring this domestic violence aspect, not, not domestic violence, but just violence in itself into the Maplewood elections here. They're coming up. We, and for anybody watching any place, November 5th is election, so get out and know who you want your servants to be. And in relationship to violence, um, you know, we have a choice of uh, six women candidates for mayor, two for mayor and four for city council. And there's a definite difference between these women. And in the mayor's race, you have Diana Longrie, former mayor of Maplewood, and Nora Slawick, for former representative of parts of Maplewood at the state legislature. And I went down to the legislature and talked to Nora Slawick about domestic violence and gave her and talked to her about this information uh, that men are being abused. And the concern I got back, well, it wasn't a concern that I got back. I got nothing back. Um, all right, so what? Uh, I really don't care. And that was, that was what was being presented to me in the um, atmosphere uh, of the room. And I said, well, here's all the research. Uh, and here's the information. Here's law professor Kelly Hill from Indiana, uh, disabusing domestic violence, uh, Martin Fiebert study, Tom James books, uh, 12 things you aren't supposed to know about domestic violence. And I said, uh, uh, would you read these? Could, you know, I'll, I'll give them to you. Would you read them? And she goes, uh, no, I, I'm not going to read them. That's too much time. And it is a lot of time. Uh, but then I said, well, can I just give them to you so you can just put them on your shelf and just in case the issue comes up, you, you have a resource. Didn't even want that. And it was just this attitude that was there. And in my experiences with Diana Longrie, totally different. She understands. She's in the courtroom. She sees the false allegation. She, she deals with both sides of the equation. And, you know, it's one of the attorneys that I've seen that actually uh, try to deal truthfully with do domestic violence and don't use it as a weapon uh, when it's really not there against a, another person. If domestic violence has taken a place, um, you know, she's going to defend her clients. But if it's not there, you know, she's going to talk to her client. Uh, so uh, it's just a attitude difference. Uh, a warm, receptive person like Diana Longry versus Nora Slawick, who's, who's cold and... Um, in my mind, it really doesn't care about the citizens. Uh, so that's my perspective on that, and I'm all in on, on Diana Longrie for this election. And then in city council races, you have um, uh, 
Rebecca Cave and Margaret Behrens, two people that I, I know very well, and they're very nice, and they're very uh, cordial, they listen well, and I mean, they're just nice people. In contrast to uh, Kathleen Juniman, who uh, turns her back when citizens are talking uh, at the podium, uh, making, giving information to the city council. Uh, she, you know, in the audience, uh, you know, she'll, she'll flip people off, or she has. I mean, we got the video of that. We've shown that on this show. And just, just turned high and mighty. We ha even have the hypocrisy of her before she became a city council member going up and talking to the council uh, and just berating them about their behavior and always having to second and who can out motion somebody and 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 then she turned into that person she has turned into that person with her behavior on the city council and and always making snide remarks ag against the citizens uh, not I shouldn't say always but quite often making snide remarks against the citizens when they're making presentations or against other council members when it's their turn to talk and she can't control herself for her own turn and so this is really what I see as an election of the nice woman versus the mean woman and Marilee Abrams who's also running has teamed up with Kathleen Juniman and Norris Lawick and you know, I don't know much about her. I haven't experienced much b about her, but she, that's a team. And so she's going to be doing what this team wants. And I don't think that's going to be listening to the citizens of Maplewood. So, um, and then uh, Nora Slavik has just come out with a uh, campaign card having former mayor uh, David Tamala, uh, former police chief David Tamala on the card and another, uh, the former police chief before him. I forgot his name. Um, but Chief Tamala ran a very, uh, a lot of bad stuff happened in Maplewood under his watch. Um, Patty Guerin getting beat up and uh, police officers doing negative uh, things to citizens, uh, just going beyond what they needed to do, sexual harassment, giving uh, alcohol to minors, uh, transporting people out of the city in the trunk of the car you know that type of thing going on and having numerous lawsuits that the city had to spend over two million dollars uh, in whatever cost to settle uh, the case uh, and that's just one of them so you know you can see where it's nice versus mean and so I'm with Diana Longry, Rebecca Cave and Margaret Behrens uh, for the city council races. Now we have a caller on here. So, caller, do you have a comment or question? Hi, Tim. Well, this hello. is Margaret Barron's Hi, caller, Margaret. and I want to thank you for the kind words. Well, they're met. I mean, I, I mean it. Uh, you're, oh, you're, I know you, you do. A I know very you special do. person. And I know that you're on top of the issues at City Hall also. Um, my comment, actually, tonight was I wanted to call and talk to you. Uh, I have a couple comments about the domestic violence issue. Okay. And I remember you and I were both at a town hall meeting at Maplewood City Hall right. a couple of years ago here. And they had all of our representatives there. Uh, Betty McCollum had a staff person there. She uh, was too busy to come talk to and answer questions from her constituents. But anyway, Nora was there. And I remember you asking the question about domestic violence. Right. And, and you did mention, you know, how, how men are abuse victims as well. And she said, no, I don't agree with you. Oh, I, she, I forgot about that. But yes, you're right. Oh, well, no, I got it on tape. Said, no, <laughs> men are not victims of abuse, which right. of course is not true. Right. Um, men are abuse victims quite often. And I remember the lady from Tubman standing up and defending your yeah, she position. Did. And she said yes, and she had the statistics, and Nora still did not believe it. She says that's not true. She says men are stronger than women. They are not victims of abuse. And that lady, the that look on her face, she was quite surprised that uh, she was being challenged, I believe. 
And, you know, Nora, I can't imagine. She she sees the funding for abuse pro or programs for human services coming through the Capitol. She really should know what the money's going to be spent for. Because you know, Tim, that I serve on many committees uh, throughout the county. And one of the committees I serve on uh, was a panel for the review panel for human services. And, and there we talked a lot about abuse victims and how the system needs to be improved and stuff. And the issue of fathers' rights and fathers being victims of abuse was one of the issues we were dealing with. And for Nora to be so, um, you know, just casting that aside because of her own opinion, right. that's not going to help anybody. Yeah, you know, and you got the flavor in that meeting what I had to go through in a in a much uh, enhanced and uh, worst <laughs> uh, right. situation in her uh, office at the state legislature. So oh, fa facts, facts were irrelevant. Uh, getting a different opinion or having more information was irrelevant. I'm just not going to deal with it. That was... Oh, right. It wasn't yeah. anything she was interested in, and it was very clear she didn't want to talk about it. And she was very put out. You could tell in her demeanor she didn't want to be there to begin with, and she certainly did not want to answer questions from anybody. And the other thing uh, she did say, the citizens there, it was packed, you'll remember. People said down the line, all these, Uyghur was there, Lily was there, all of them, and Victoria Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. How are right. you going to vote when the stadium, uh, Viking Stadium comes up? Right. What did they say? Every one of them said, we're going to vote no. Yeah. <laughs> and when it came to the vote, they, every one of them voted yes. Yeah, well, things change, you know, that's, that's the, uh, that's what they say. Well, You're Caller, welcome. yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate You're that. You're welcome, and thank you again for all your support and uh, yeah. um, a wonderful program. Take well, care and uh, best wishes on Tuesday. I hope you get in. Uh, you know, and this is the difference between a representative uh, of the people, of and for the people, versus one that's there for themselves. And that's why I'm for Diana, Margaret, and... Um, uh, Rebecca Cave. Well, we're going to move on uh, here because we got, again, this is a scary show. Well, I'm going to close with this on this domestic violence issue is that um, if you're committing domestic violence, it's got to stop. And it doesn't matter who you are. And everybody that does it needs to be held accountable. That's the issue. Don't play the political game of uh, sexism of one versus the other. If it's happening, it needs to stop. And that's my point. It's not the domestic violence industry's point or many of the legislators' point. Uh, it's there as a weapon, a sexist weapon. So.